Oh boy, so we thought spring break was over. It was almost over, and then suddenly it wasn't over. Anybody else in the same boat? Now we've got the kids home for who knows how long, and we've gotta get creative about what we're gonna do. Hi, I'm Amy, and this channel is all about creativity. So I thought I would upload a quick video uh, with some ideas of things to do with kids when they're at home instead of at school, and this is kind of the home decor version. How can you do some home projects that involve the kids that will keep you all busy and maybe solve some problems and make your house a little more enjoyable while you're at home? Stick with me, let's check it out. All right, the first thing I suggest you do is look around your house and identify some of the problem areas. You know where they are, the places that you just try and brush past without looking because they make you groan every time you see them, the places where clutter always piles up, the places that don't really function the way that you imagined they would or want them to. Maybe you can pick one of those areas, an area where some of the family clutter tends to pile up and see if you can't get the family on board to tackle it and try and make it a better place while we're stuck at home. In my house, I've decided that I want my little preschool boy to be contained in a smaller area with his toys and books and all the stuff he's always doing. It seems like the entire house right now is his territory. and. I think he's old enough for me to start pushing to keep that in certain areas of the house. So there's an upstairs area that we're gonna call kind of his play area and I want to spruce it up, organize books, get things functioning better and make this an area where he can have his library and his toys and then limit the number of things that we're gonna have in there. Try to contain it and tell him that that's where we can pull things out. I'm not great at this, I'll tell you. I'm creative and a lot of Things when they're in front of me, that's when I think of them and creative clutter is something that tends to happen in the house and so this is something I'm fighting constantly and I do want to teach my little boy to try and get on top of it from the time he's young and have good habits so that he can live in a house that's not a mess all the time. So that starts with me as showing him and so one of the things we're going to do is try and rein in some of the clutter into kind of one area of toys and then make sure that we have places to put everything away and if we don't have room for some stuff then it may be time to pass some of those things on to some other kids. So that's one of the things we'll be working on. So some of the projects you can do that you can get kids involved in to make especially a good kids area include painting a wall with chalkboard paint so that it becomes a chalkboard wall. We've already done that in this area and so this is a natural place to make a play area for him because one wall is already painted with chalkboard paint. But that's, an area, that's a job that you can get your kids involved in, especially the older ones who can handle paint a little bit better. Another fun project to do is to find certain artwork of theirs, put it into frames and make like a gallery wall, make an art gallery with their work or make their work important and let them help with that also to the extent that it's age appropriate. Another fun thing is to try and find creative uses of storage that they can help with and also to find creative ways to display some of their work so some of the decor you do may be some toys that they've made or things they've built. Um, in this case, I'm gonna try and come up with some of his robots that he constantly builds and see if we can turn them into installation art, make a little art gallery, library, reading and playing area. I do wanna talk for a moment about enlisting your kids to work on projects like this when it comes to decorating the home. When you get your kids to do it with you, they have more buy-in and of course they are more likely to keep the area clean and to be involved in the process of, of how it looks and keeping it that way. And so it's a good thing to do and it's also a project when they're at home that you can work on together. The one caveat I will say is that older kids can have more involvement in this than younger kids and also the more money you're spending on things the more you have a right to kind of keep control over where the project's gonna go, okay? Small kids, a preschooler is not an interior designer, and I don't think you should feel like you need to let a four-year-old design your entire house because you gotta live there, you're a grown-up, you're the one spending the money on items, and uh, I used to have a children's store, a children's furniture store, where we did custom painted furniture and accessories and all kinds of stuff. And I saw over and over again that, that the parents were happiest when they allowed their child to have input, but not to expect that they would make all the decisions themselves. 
Parents are the ones spending the money. Parents are the ones who know what's going to work and what's going to look good. And so children should know that they get to have input, but they do not have total creative control over the project. Now, if you're doing something like what I did in this project, I let my child choose from two thrift store frames that I had bought. And they both cost at, at the most a dollar each. I'm not sure whether I was there on dollar day or 50 cent day, but they were two frames I had picked out to just reuse and do something with. In this case, my investment was not high, and so I was willing to let a five-year-old choose which one he wanted to do and to let him paint it himself and to let him put the pictures in. You'll get to see a little later in the video that the mirror did end up getting cracked. <laughs> I won't lie, I was not real happy about that. I was not a happy camper when that happened. We were working on that project together. Didn't get that on video or I would share that with you. But anyway, just keeping it real. So because that frame cost me a dollar at the most, I, you know, it didn't in the world that the frame, that the mirror got cracked. So my little boy got to be involved in this project. He got to put his artwork in it himself. He got to help paint the frame himself. And so it is fun to find the places where you can have those kinds of projects for your littler kids. If you have older kids or kids who are very compliant and very neat, then, then you can just fast forward through all that talk because maybe your kid is able to do these projects without, without it getting messy or breaking or getting messed up. But find things that they can do, um, that they can get involved in that are appropriate for them. And then, you know, just delineate the times when you need to have the say and when they need to just give input but let you make the decision. And then everybody will end up being happier in the long run. All right, one last thing before we jump into the video of the project. I just wanna encourage you to click down below and sign up for my newsletter. I'll be sending out tips and tricks and different messages about ways that you can make your home unique and reflect your unique personality and the qualities of your family. A lot of us live in neighborhoods where, you know, every fifth house is the same style and we want to find ways, those of us who are creatives and right brainers, to make the house really feel like us and not just feel like we're living in a cookie cutter box. So that's the kind of thing I focus on in my newsletter. So I'd love for you to sign up in the link below and join us. Thanks a lot. You like this one the best? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the one we'll use. Yeah, because I love this mirror. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty fun. Okay, so we're ready to spruce up this frame and put some artwork in it. One of the things we're gonna do first is repaint and touch up the areas that are all scratched and scuffed. And one of the things I recommend to use for this is chalk paint. It sticks on everything, it's easy to use. And it's probably one of the only items that is not sold out at Walmart now that everyone is hoarding toilet paper and everything else. So check out that brand of chalk paint Waverly. You can get it inexpensively at Walmart and it's a good one for kids to use. So I let my little boy go through and paint any dark spots or messy places he saw. And then later after it was dry, I did the final coat myself just to make sure it wasn't too messy. But this kept him busy for a while, so that was good with me. Next thing, we were looking at what kind of artwork to use to put in it. I recommend that you find something not too precious because you may want to cut it up. In the end, my little boy wanted to make artwork specifically for this, and I was happy about doing that because it was one more project that kept him busy for a while and engaged and working on this while I was able to do a few other things. So I drew the sizes that he needed to work in and he made some artwork specifically to go inside each window. So while he was busy working on that, I was sorting and organizing some of the books and toys in this cabinet. Uh, this cabinet came from Ikea. We had bought it before, but that's a, a good place to get inexpensive furniture for organizing. I really like to buy secondhand furniture as much as I can and repaint it or fix it up. But when it comes to things that are specifically for organizing, sometimes you actually have to go out and buy the piece that you need. For this piece, we decided to make half the cubbies filled with books and the other half with bins that have toys and things inside them. Then I started rearranging, trying to make it look sort of cute with my boy's favorite toys. He really likes robots and trash trucks and I organize the top. You know, that'll probably last for about five minutes after I walk away, but we keep trying, right? We keep fighting the good fight. One thing I tried to think about doing when I was organizing the books was I put one cubby that only had books that are like educational or study books, learning alphabets and words, so that I can assign him 
uh, certain times, periods of time when he's able to work out of that cubby when he needs to do that before he can play with other toys, say the cubby that has the Legos in it or something. And that's how I'm trying to divide them so that we can separate our tasks. And the next thing I did to try and make this like a little art gallery or museum for him was not only hang up the picture that had a lot of his artwork framed in it, but then on either side of it, I hung up some of his robots, sort of like a sculpture installation on the wall. So we have a lot of his toys and artwork there displayed. And I'm hoping that this will be a place where he enjoys hanging out and studying and reading and playing. Okay, well that's one project down, one corner tackled in the house. But now, how many more days are we gonna have? What do you guys think? We're gonna have to come up with a lot more projects before we're through with this coronavirus thing happening. So I wanna hear your ideas in the comments. What are you guys doing to fill the time? What are you doing to engage your kids and how's it working out for you? Let me know. Thanks for watching and be safe everybody. Take care.